Your greatness, I must implore an audience once more. What is it, you sniveling globling? It's the Flat Earthers, my lord. They're asking about ships disappearing over the curvature of the globe. Clearly, ships moving away from an observer disappear hull first, proving they are descending down beyond the curve, correct? Of course they are. What else would it be? The silly flat earthers use their zoom cameras to bring boats that have gone over the curve back into full view, hull and all. Then they say this proves the boats aren't disappearing due to Earth's curvature. How should I respond, my liege? Fool, have you not yet learned the magic word? Um, what magic Refraction. word? Refraction. Refraction. Light bends, insolent one. Look at a straw in a glass of water. When ships disappear over the curvature of the globe, flat earthers are simply zooming in on the refracted image like the straw in the glass of water. So light is bending around the curvature of the globe to show them a refracted image when they zoom in? It does look like they are zooming in on the actual boat, though, and doesn't appear to be going through the water like your example with the straw in the glass. You dare question my authority, Globling? Of course not, your worshipfulness. It's just that the Flat Earthers say it all has to do with the vanishing point and perspective. In their view, ship's hulls disappear from the bottom up due to the nature of our vision, not the curvature of the globe. They say our eyes make the distant ground appear to rise up towards the horizon the same way the distant sky appears to sink down towards the horizon. That this is why street lights of equal height appear to get shorter in the distance, and why planes flying away at a constant altitude appear to go downwards towards the horizon. Hogwash. Of all the mishmashed riffraff I've ever heard, that takes the cake. The horizon is the physical curvature of the globe not just some subjective perspective line. Certainly, Supreme Commander. But then, if ships are disappearing beyond the curvature just a few miles away at sea level, how is it that amateur high-altitude balloons, reaching heights of over 20 miles high and able to see for hundreds of miles in all directions, still see a perfectly flat horizon at eye level 360 degrees around? Because, you nincompoop, twenty miles high is minuscule compared to the massive size of our Earth globe. You would have to be much higher in altitude to notice any curvature. So you're saying that at sea level, ships are disappearing over the curvature of the globe just a few miles away. But at high altitudes, we still can't see the curvature of the globe even hundreds of miles away? Make that make sense to me, my overseer. Is it not a double standard? I'll tell you the double standard. The double standard is acting like flat earthers have any standard at all. And the only reason they exist in this day and age is due to a failing of the education system. That may be, boss. But alas, I have another query. When the flat earthers ask why a helicopter can't just hover in place and wait for the spinning ball earth underneath to bring their destinations to them, we laugh in their faces, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, Minion. The entire atmosphere moves in exact unison with the spinning globe, like a frozen jello mold. So the helicopter will stay over the exact same geographic point forever. Likewise, planes have the same moving frame of reference since before takeoff and after landing, so they can go any direction without having to factor Earth's spin. But even if the atmosphere spins perfectly along with the Earth westwards at over a thousand miles per hour at the equator, shouldn't that mean planes traveling eastwards over the equator, at an average speed of 500 miles per hour, should arrive at their destinations nearly three times faster than when traveling westwards? No, slave. Frames of reference. Gravity. Buzzwords. Coriolis Force. Argument from authority. Be gone. Speaking of the Coriolis effect, Master, 
You say that helicopters and hot air balloons can hover over the spinning earth for hours upon hours, not having to worry about or calculate any kind of movement, because the atmosphere turns in exact unison with the globe earth, right? Then why do you also claim that snipers firing bullets absolutely must factor the direction and spin of the earth before making their shots? Why would the earth spinning under the bullet for split seconds be so impactful? But yet, earth spinning under planes and helicopters for hours at a time be completely negligible. Isn't this another globe earth double standard, your honor? How is the earth spinning beneath the bullet, but not the balloon? What if a sniper was shooting from up in a hot air balloon? My lord, my liege, where did you go? What's the answer? What do I say to the flat earthers? <laughs>